It was 6 a.m. I was in a rather tired stupor. You know how this goes. People who have watched this channel for a while now know that some of these videos wind up with tired stupors. But this tired stupor, it was different. I was writing down the best team for Mono Dragon, trying to ultimately come to the conclusion as to what the best team for Mono Dragon would even be in the context of competitive monotype. Oh yeah, any time I mentioned monotype in any capacity up to this point was foreshadowing. Pat yourself on the back if you caught on in advance. And then it occurred to me. As I sat there in front of Pokemon Showdown's team builder, trying to come up with the perfect team of six for the video. And not just like the team of six I like using for Mono Dragon. There is no perfect monotype team. There are gonna be popular choices, and popular choices for a reason, but no combination is perfect. So I scrapped the idea entirely. And instead of trying to tell you what to play in Monotype, I'm going to tell you how to play Monotype. Welcome to how to play Mono Dragon. Oh, keep in mind, Terra Stylizing is banned in Monotype. And for good reason, so is Booster Energy. So don't expect to hear about that in the video. As always though, if you like Lo-Fi, check out Luna's World in the description below. Now, let's start. Luckily, Mono Dragon is an excellent Monotype to start with. Not only is it considered to be the best current monotype, and as it should be, because there shouldn't be a type more powerful than the almighty powerful dragon, something about seeing a stupid weasel with swords for fangs try to be stronger than caveman mega salamence didn't sit right with me. And luckily, for us, not only is mono dragon considered to be the best monotype, it's also incredibly simple for the most part. Not dead easy per se, but sometimes it may as well be with the ease of access to this monotype and just how spammable some of your moves are. That's right, dragons are all about high octane offense and incredibly fast and breakneck gameplay. You're speeding down a highway with no intention of hitting the brakes, and you're trying to ruthlessly decimate your opponent as quickly and efficiently as possible. Offense is the name of the game, and boy do I love playing it. So, let's get into the pros and cons. Mono Dragon has a lot of pros, because offense is the name of the game. A lot of dragons are geared towards exactly that, sporting obscenely high attacking stats, and some also happen to boast incredibly high speed stats while they're at it. Dragapult and Roaring Moon are two examples that come to mind as two Pokemon that are just blazing fast. Pay attention to these two because they are some of the best tools that a Mono Dragon player has in their arsenal. The ability for Mono Dragon to blitz through just about anything in sight is immaculate, with their perfect blend of speed and offense being one of your main win conditions. But does that mean that they're frail? Oh heavens no. Another pro to the dragons is that a lot of pseudo legendaries with base 600 stat totals are dragons. Because of this, dragons just aren't incredibly hard hitters. But they're also surprisingly bulky too. This natural bulk allows them to live hits that would kill any normal mod, even if sometimes only by a slither. But that one lived hit can be a difference maker between life and death. So living a hit and being able to resume your onslaught with reckless abandon completely undeterred. Pokemon like Archelodon, Gadging Fire, and Hazard Stacking Garchomp are some examples of this. Multi-scale Dragonite too, since all it needs is one free turn the D-Dance and then end your life. And that's really easy to get. Dragon types also come with rather important resistances, being resistant to the starter trio types and electric. Resisting these types comes in a lot of handy, and this doesn't account for the added resistances added by other types. Dragon isn't just good offensively, but defensively too. The sheer variety of dragons and what they can do type-wise is phenomenal. Dragapult makes use of Ghost, one of the best offensive types in the game, and also functions as a rapid spin blocker on occasion. Archlodon can serve as an offensive tank and way to stonewall poison types and toxic spikes. Raging Bolt can basically function as if it's King Gambit, but a dragon. Garchomp can not only punish U-Turn with its rough skin, but be a Volt Switch switch in thanks to its ground typing. And to top it all off, Dragonite, the Lati Twins, and Hydreigon all serve as ways to give you a ground immunity thanks to Flying-type and Levitate. 
It's beautiful just how many options this group of Pokemon has on the table. Hazard Setters. Dragon types have those too. And being able to have the Hazard Setter to put chip damage on the board and make your Pokemon even harder to switch into is a super pro when it comes to these. Every percent counts, and Mono Dragon takes advantage of every percent it can take off its opponent. While I know Garchomp has fallen out of favor, and Mono Dragon players like to use Archlodon as their rock setter, I found myself partial to Garchomp, being able to set rocks and spikes. Set spikes coming up in the Mono fighting matchup more often than not. Garchomp with leftovers, an investment in its tankiness, can survive an unexpected number of things, and still have a hard enough hitting earthquake to where you can't switch into it willy nilly. Combine this with Dragon Tail, and that residual chip is going to work like a charm later in the match. It's what we call an investment. And we're gonna get to your cons later. But Garchomp having Stab to hit Steals with, and Archlodon to help you deal with fairies is a godsend. And said Archlodon also isn't weak to dragon attacks. Keep these in mind, for they will come up. They are now coming up. Your Stab being completely stuffed by Fairy, one of the other best types in the game, is absolutely infuriating at times, and can be considered the sole reason you carry around your Archlodon. And with Mono Dragon being the best Mono type, Mono Fairy will show up to counter it. Your team composition, no matter how you build it, absolutely fears a Scarf Flutter main and a Scarf Iron Valiant, because you cannot switch into them no matter what you do. Fairies as a whole are a bane of your existence, and your Mono type is forced to run stuff like Iron Head on your Roaring Moon just to cover it. You would think that Mono Steel would be troublesome for Mono Dragon, but when Garchomp, kamo -Oh, and Gouging Fire are all options at your disposal, Steel Resisting Dragon isn't that crazy. Yeah, some Pokemon of yours will run fire and ground coverage to beat Steel, but said coverage is also some of the best stuff in the game. So there's worlds where even without Steel, you ran Fire Blast and Earthquake anyways because they're just solid tools to have. For reasons I don't think I need to explain, Mono Ice is a giant pain in your butt because Ice is one of the best offensive types and your whole team can't switch into it. Only reason it isn't practically unwinnable is because Gouging Fire and Archlodon exist. Otherwise, Ice type would slam in the dragon harder than you are slamming into the like button right now. In fact, I'll give you a few seconds right now to set up a sword stance and attack that button before we move on. Okay, moving on. Mono fighting. Yes, fighting can be a giant pain in the tail. It sounds blatantly idiotic at first, especially since you have access to Dragapult and the Lati twins, but do not let access to those tools fool you. Great Tusk's access to Ice Spinner, Iron Hands being able to tank your attacks and fire off Ice Punches, Iron Valiant having Choice Scarf Moonblast and the ability to threaten any Pokemon on your team, and even Sneasler threatening to outpace and outdamage your entire team if even a remote factor in a match goes wrong is utterly terrifying. This type also punishes you for Roaring Moon and Archlodon for super effective damage. Despite the fact that on the surface, mono fighting isn't that scary, from my experience and in practice, mono fighting can end you if you're not careful. In terms of hazard removal, you have no hazard removal. Cyclozar and Tatsugiri aren't worth running just for the sake of rapid spin and Noivern and Altaria are not worth running just to have defog. If hazards go up on you, you just gotta live with it, chief. What you should have done is you should have just murdered the hazard setter quicker. Skill issue, issue of skill. Luckily, you have more than enough heavy duty boots to compensate if you happen to be afraid of chip damage to the point where you look under your bed every night for random pebbles thrown on the floor. Or worse, Legos. But the biggest con of all time to Mono Dragon is none of these factors combined. No, 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 no. The biggest con to Mono Dragon is that Dragon beats Dragon. And if Dragon is the best Mono type and Dragon beats Dragon, as a Mono Dragon player, you're gonna find yourself queuing up for the dreaded mirror match. Mono Dragon mirrors are incredibly messed up and incredibly difficult to play. 
Because while skill is most certainly a factor, some games can straight up come down to losing speed ties. Yeah, it's nice to outspeed everything with Dragapult. You know who else has Dragapult? Your opponent. And odds are, you may very well have both lead Pult. The speed tie will then decide the entire pace of the match, since whoever loses the coin toss will be at a massive deficit. Being down Dragapult in the Mono Dragon Mirror can be game determining. But overall, the Mono Dragon Mirrors are volatile, hard to play out, and very icky. The Pokemon on Mono Dragon each fill vastly the same role for the most part. But I'm going to give a quick overview of what the more common choices can do and send a screenshot of two teams. The first is a Smogon Forum sample team, and the other, which I'll put more focus on since I know it better, is the team I made and used, which some of you may have seen glimpses of before. And then, I will probably end off the video with a small montage of the team and what it can do. Garchomp, while having potential to be a scale shot sweeper, doesn't typically do this in Mono Dragon, because they're a Pokemon in its monotype that can do just that, or Dragon Dance instead. What Garchomp can do that they can't is be a budget Ting Lu and stack hazards, which is something incredibly valuable. Archelodon is a solid fairy check that can either set up stealth rocks on its way to check fairies, or it can wear an assault vest. Either way it's ran, it's typically a bulky attacker, and very seldom does it go all in on speed when its comrades have that covered. You run this no matter what. You live and die off its ability to not die to Moonblast. Due to a lack of booster energy and Terra flying acrobatics, Roaring Moon typically finds itself playing one of three sets. You're either a choice banded wall breaker, one shotting whatever is in your way and using U turn to pivot, a scarf offense breaker that aims to outspeed offensive Pokemon and revenge kill, or a Dragon Dance sweeper who intends to win the game after finding exactly one free turn. With Dragonite, you live a hit use Dragon Dance, and typically win the game with Extreme Speed and Earthquake. Sometimes you use Fire Punch, sometimes you use Roost, and sometimes you use Outrage because you're based. You always wear boots though. With Gouging Fire, you take Dragonite, but less bulky and much, much more game-breaking. Also, never let your Gouging Fire walk outside without shoes. Otherwise, it's gonna step on a pebble and die. It's Mega Charizard X, but it can hold an item. Raging Bolt is King Gambit, but bulkier and uses special attack. It typically uses leftovers for its recovery, and Calm Mind and Thunderclap are war crimes. Walking Wake, spec wall breaker that pretty much exists to destroy everything. Its Draco meter is why the dinosaurs went extinct. Dragapult is one of the most valuable Pokemon in Mono Dragon thanks to its ability to outspeed just about anything that isn't boosted. Despite having a higher attack stat, Dragapult functions as a Specs Offense Breaker that fires off Draco Meteors, Fire Blasts, and Shadow Balls with U-Turn as a pivot move. There are people who play Banded Dragon Darts, but they're less common. With Latios, it functions similarly to Walking Wake, but has Psy Shock for special walls and can set up Calm Mind and Agility for a stored power set if given the opportunity. With Latias, you see Latios' ability and stored power set, but somehow both better and worse. It can also function as a solid choice scarfer. As you can see, this team is all offense. All gas in the tank and no breaks with very little room for actually dedicated defensive options. With that said, let's get to the teams. This is Dragon Bulky Offense by a player named Adjustments. This is my personal squad that I like to use when I play Mono Dragon. And to end it off, rather than just talk about it, let's play the team. To end off the video, here's some Mono Dragon gameplay with the team I like bringing, just to give you ideas on what it can really do. Thank you. 
And that's it. If you want more of these in the future, just show support and I'll keep doing them. Mono Dragon is the one I am the most experienced in. So I wanna take time to learn the monotypes before pumping more of these out. But I actually had a lot of fun making this one and I hope to keep doing so in the future. Let me know which monotype you wanna see next in the comments below.